Rondale Moore is one of my favorite college football players of all time. Maybe it's because he took over college football as a freshman, maybe it was the fact that he was the guy to put Purdue football back on the map, or maybe it's the fact that I was there for his freshman season while he was at Purdue, and he was an absolute star. It's probably a mix of all three, and Rondale Moore is one of the more underrated players going into the 2021 NFL Draft. After his spectacular freshman season in which he took over college football and was one of the best players in the country, a lot of people forgot about him because he had an injury his sophomore year and Purdue was so bad in 2020. But Rondale Moore is a special talent and he's an absolute freak of nature and a guy who will be a steal for whatever team decides to take him. I'm gonna do a long video about his story and his full draft process, but yesterday he had an incredible pro day and he put up some pretty jaw-dropping numbers and with his performances yesterday at his pro day, some people might compare him to DK Metcalf or other players who are a freak of nature. But before I talk about Rondale Moore and what he did yesterday and why he could be a steal, I'm gonna be doing a ton of NFL draft and college football news content these next few months and you're not gonna to wanna to miss out on the journey of this channel, so be sure to subscribe now, give the video a like, and let me know another topic I should do next. Now let's go ahead and get started and talk about Rondale Moore. So before we get started and talk about what happened yesterday, I want to briefly talk about his rise as a player. I'm going to definitely do a longer video in the coming weeks, but in case you guys are wondering, Rondale Moore grew up in New Albany, Indiana and actually lived five doors down from former Indiana basketball superstar Romeo Langford, and both of them were best friends growing up. Romeo became a star basketball player and Rondale Moore became a star football player, but when he was in high school, he had a decision to make. He decided to cross the river to Louisville and went to Trinity Catholic High School, which is one of the powerhouse programs of the Midwest in, in terms of their on-field results and their talent production. It's also the same school that former Louisville quarterback and Western Kentucky coach Jeff Brom had gone to, and we will talk about that a little bit more. Rondale would have to sit out a year though because of eligibility, but he would become an absolute freak of nature and a superstar and was so good that he was a four-star recruit and actually originally committed to play football for Texas. I know he doesn't go there now, so obviously there's something that changed, but Purdue football was never an option for him. To understand how bad Purdue football was, no one went to the games, Daryl Hazel was an absolute joke of a coach, and Purdue football was probably the most boring Power 5 school outside of maybe Rutgers or Kansas. They were atrocious and no talented players wanted to go there. Finally, after one more terrible year, Daryl Hazel was fired by Purdue. They got a new athletic director and they decided to hire a new coach. Who did they look to? A guy who was an offensive genius who just so happened to be an alum of Trinity Catholic High School. And his name was Jeff Brom, as I already alluded to. Brom was a spectacular coach at Western Kentucky and had one of the best quarterbacks in the country in Brendan Dowdy. And this was a team that ran an air raid style offense and he was one of the up and coming names in college football coaching. Moore decided to reopen his commitment and after he was named an Army All-American, a lot of people all of a sudden started thinking that Rondale Moore could commit to the Boilermakers. And when it came time to pick his school on a live announcement, he chose the Purdue Boilermakers hat and he became a Purdue football player. This is the same time that I became a freshman at Purdue University as well, and not a lot of people were talking about him going into the 2018 season. Brom had already had one full season at Purdue, in which they went 7-6 and six and won the Foster Farms Bowl against Arizona, and 11 of those 12 games were actually close, so he had Purdue football on the map, and there was even an offer that apparently Tennessee football wanted to hire Jeff Brom, but that was just a rumor. Rondale was the first big recruit that Brom had really landed, he squatted over 600 pounds, which was caught on video and went viral before his freshman year, and those who followed Purdue football and followed Purdue recruiting knew that this guy was going to be a program changer, they just didn't know it would be this quick. I was at that first game against Northwestern, as it was a Thursday night kickoff on ESPN, and the first game of the 2018 college football season. Rondale Moore had two touchdowns in the first half and broke the Purdue record for all-purpose yards in a single game to start out his Purdue career. Unfortunately, a Purdue defensive lineman had a late hit which would end the game and Purdue would end up losing by four, but Rondale Moore put on a show in front of a national audience and proved that he was going to be an absolute star in the making. He continued a spectacular play, but Purdue got off to an 0-3 start that season, but things would finally turn around as they would knock off a ranked Boston College team and go on the road and beat both Illinois and Nebraska, and they were now 3-3 for a showdown with number 2 Ohio State. A lot of you guys know this as the Tyler Trent game, and it was arguably the biggest upset of the 2018 college football season, but Purdue played Ohio State very well, and in the second half, the Boilermakers absolutely went off, and they win 49-20, and Rondale Moore's superhuman-like play, where he pushed over a couple defenders and scored a touchdown, was sort of the highlight of that game, and that was the night that Purdue was put on the map, and the Jeff Brom hype had reached unreal standards. 
Rondell would continue to have a great season and had a great performance against their rival Indiana to get them to 6-6 six and six in another bowl game. Unfortunately, people began to forget about both Purdue and Rondell as they got killed by Auburn in the Music City Bowl in one of the worst bowl losses in bowl game history. By this time, everyone knew Rondell Moore's name, but just how good of a freshman season did he have? He put up video game-like numbers his first year as he caught 114 passes for 1,258 yards and 12 touchdowns. He was the third player in Big Ten history to catch over 100 passes in a year and broke the Purdue record for all-purpose yards in a season, was named the Big Ten Freshman of the Year, Big Ten Rookie of the Year, a first-team All-American, and won the Paul Hornick Award for the nation's most versatile player. He had an absolutely incredible year as a true freshman, and the hype was pretty unreal for the kid. Going into 2019, Purdue was expected to compete in the Big Ten West, and Rondale Moore was a serious Heisman contender. The Willowmakers continued to recruit well at the wide receiver spot as they brought in four-star recruits Milton Wright, TJ Sheffield, and David Bell. No one really thought these kids were going to have to play much as a freshman, but unfortunately people would be wrong, and this is what would hurt Rondale. The Boilers dominated Nevada in their first game for three quarters, but they blew a game and lost by way of a last-second field goal to the Wolfpack. In his next game against Vanderbilt, Moore caught a career-high 13 passes for 220 yards and two touchdowns, and he was somehow getting even better. Against TCU, Elijah Sindelar got injured at quarterback, so freshman Jack Plummer had to start, and that game, Rondale was not very effective. Against Minnesota, the worst-case scenario would happen, as on the exact same play, Elijah Sindelar would get injured for the season once again, and Rondale Moore would go down with a season-ending hyperextension of his hamstring. From there, that was basically the end of the Boilermaker season, as they went 4-8, and eight, but David Bell would emerge as their new star at wide receiver, and he will definitely be a name that we cover on this channel in the future. Because of this injury, a lot of people basically forgot about Rondale Moore going into 2020, but going into that season, he would actually decide to opt out and prepare for the draft, so his name was in the press a lot, but he would decide to come back for the game against Minnesota, where they would get hosed with an offensive pass interference call that would lose them the game. When you talk about the top wide receivers going into the 2020 draft, a lot of people talk about Jalen Waddell, Jamar Chase, Devontae Smith, or Rashad Bateman. But Rondale Moore is a name that everyone needs to keep an eye on, and he's a player that a lot of people are forgetting about. He is an absolute freak of nature, and at his pro day, he finally put his name back in the press, and people are now starting to talk about him once again, as he had eye-popping numbers yesterday, and let's talk about just how well his pro day would go for him. So in terms of the 40-yard dash, he apparently ran a 4.29, which is absolutely blazing. In terms of his vertical, he's only 5'7", but his best effort was 45 and a half inches, which is just absolutely insane. He did not participate in the bench press yesterday, but in 2018, he squatted over 600 pounds, and he was only 180 pounds at that time, and again, this guy is an absolute freak. He played in a total of 20 games in three years at Purdue, and he caught a total of 178 catches for 1,915 yards and 14 touchdowns. He measured at 5'7", which will be his biggest disadvantage for the draft, and sadly, the only other notable wide receiver at below 5'9", was Cole Beasley. A lot of projections have him going in the first round or second round, with 24-7 Sports saying he could go as high as number 29 to the Packers, and Walter Football projecting him to go with the 61st pick in the second round to the Bills. Rondale Moore is an absolute jitterbug who has blazing speed, has great stats, has an incredible work ethic, and has a chip on his shoulder. A lot of people have forgotten about how talented this kid is, and yesterday's pro day put him on the map, and a lot of articles and media sources are talking about him right now, and he is going to be a guy who shows out and impresses in the NFL in these next few years. As a diehard Indianapolis Colts fan and Purdue fan, I would absolutely love for Rondale Moore to fall to us at the Colts, but I don't know if they will take him or if he will still be available. Rondale Moore is a superstar in the making, and in my opinion is the most underrated wide receiver in this year's draft, and I know I am incredibly biased, but this is a guy that most teams should not pass up on, and he will be a guy who starts for a couple of years. His biggest concerns are his height, his two years off of football, and his injury issues, but I definitely think he will overcome that and become a superstar-like player in the coming years. What do you guys think, though? Do you think Rondale Moore will be a boom or a bust in this year's draft? Where do you think he will land, and what player should I take a look at next? Be sure to let me know down in the comment section what player I should do next and your thoughts on all of that. If you want to support what I'm doing here on YouTube, please be sure to give the video a like, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos, including my longer documentary about his story as a player, and I will leave that on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.